board members, for your, uh, for your entertainment, we have uh, an amended proposal uh, before you that I can uh, talk through if uh, time allows. Good morning, Governor, Comptroller, and Treasurer. For the record, I'm Tom Hucker. I'm the chair of the Montgomery County Council's uh, Transportation Environment Committee, representing Council President Navarro in the unanimous position of the Montgomery County Council. I'm here to ask you to um, defer action on the managed lanes proposal today and to refer it back to the department to work with affected local governments to make adjustments to the plan to incorporate their input and win their support. Governor Hogan, as our transportation chair, I sincerely want to thank you for your bipartisan leadership on transportation issues, first by supporting the Purple Line and later by supporting the historic funding for WMATA. The comptroller, the treasurer, and I were all vocal supporters of Purple Line 20 years ago. We spent a lot of time believing it was never going to happen. And it's very, very personally heartening to drive my kids on the way to school every day past Purple Line stations that are going to transform our region for the better. And that's happening because you saw past the partisanship and the rhetoric, and you supported the project on the merits and the analysis. In the same way, you broke a long-standing deadlock um, by supporting dedicated funding for WMATA, something many of us have been unsuccessfully supporting for 10 years. You deserve a lot of credit for both of those projects. At this point, the Managed Lanes Project does not enjoy the same broad bipartisan support that had been built behind both the Purple Line and WMATA funding, nor does it enjoy the support of our expert transportation planners as those projects had. You're absolutely right, Governor, that people are fed up, and that's why it's so important that we get this right and that it's effective. We all know that at this point, the public has not embraced this project to the same extent. It's true that a 55% majority of Marylanders in that recent poll support the project, but a far higher margin, 75% of respondents, fear the toll lanes would be too expensive to use. 75% are concerned that toll lanes will fail to reduce congestion. 80% are concerned about destruction of homes. We all know margins that high are unusual in professional surveys reflecting the broad unease about the project at this point, but we can change that. We are really grateful to you, Governor, for tackling congestion in our region. I've waited a long time for a governor to give us our the fair share of attention on this. This should be a great opportunity. But at this point, the proposal has flaws and they're all fixable. Please understand we want the attention to congestion relief, but we have a legal and a moral obligation to defend our constituents and their local land use decisions and our built and natural environments. We're here because we want to work with you to address the shortcomings of the plan. We want to engage, be engaged in the process and heard. As folks say in Annapolis, the counties affected by this project want to be at at the table and not on the menu. The proposal's well intentioned has many strong elements, but we're asking you to direct MDOT to include the amendments we sent earlier this week that are incorporated in this map. As has always been, and, and to seek the support of local officials, as has always been done on large transportation projects like the ICC, like the Purple Line, and like the Wilson Bridge. To protect our taxpayers, we also believe you should not solicit proposals before conducting an environmental impact statement, an independent fiscal analysis, including the financing, the range of tolls, and the risk from non-compete clauses and other common problems with P3s. I'm told the University of Maryland has offered the type of independent analysis we should all want to protect our taxpayers and build the broader public support that this project still needs. All major projects, especially ones of this historic magnitude, should have these studies conducted before moving forward. Only after such analysis will we know the ramifications, and all Marylanders should want bidders to be aware of those details prior to drafting their solicitations with the most accurate information in order to avoid problems down the road. For years, we've asked for balanced, multimodal congestion relief on our state highways. No one's more affected by congestion Tom, on 495. Tom, yes, I'm sir. not going to yield any more time that I might have. I don't know about the governor, but we've got Am I over? to. We have we're in got it. <laughs> <laughs> let me state, let me state unequivocally, the governor. Just the last thing to wrap up, sir. Um, your leadership on the Purple Line and WMATA funding is transforming our region for the better. You know how to break longstanding log jams and solve big problems. With a few sensible amendments and analysis, you will have a bipartisan transportation trifecta that will be the cornerstone of your legacy if you'll just work with us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I, I, I do have a question because you put this interesting looking chart up there, which I can all We put a lot read. of thought into it. How does I'm just, this, can, can I just say, like why did it just come this week when we've been working on this for two years? Well, <laughs> Sir, I, I wish I had better software myself, but all these recommendations, 90% of them on that chart, are incorporated in the priorities letters that not only do we send to you every year or two, but they're on the MDOT website. But, but so, what are they? How does this differ from what is proposed to us? Um, how it differs. I mean, it Num looks like the Beltway is green. I, I just don't. My point is, it's we're not far apart. We would like to, one, prioritize the Virginia to Frederick corridor, running new managed lanes up to Frederick. We've been asking for that for years. 
Two, on the Beltway east of 270, make improvements within the right of way, like ramp metering and use of the left shoulder. Okay, like can I interrupt for one second? Yes, so sir. you would prefer that's to have all people come down 270 from Frederick just so they can get to their jobs in Virginia, but not make everybody stop on the Beltway so they can't get anywhere in Maryland? No, that's not true, sir. We, we want to make improvements within the right of way that are cost effective and we've been asking for for years. The I think that's the same thing we're talking about. We, we'd like to use the left shoulder and we'd like to use ramp metering. Oh, Last Sunday, there were 23 cars in my neighborhood backed up to get onto Colesville Road. No traffic on Colesville Road to get onto the Beltway. Um, third, Madam Treasurer, run managed lanes up 95 to the Intercounty Connector and use the Intercounty Connector more. Direct southbound traffic onto the Intercounty Connector rather than the Beltway. It was promised to take traffic off the Beltway. It's underutilized. We've already we're paying for it. That will bring in revenue for for MDOT as well. Fourth, add the reversible lanes on 270 all the way past 370 to Frederick to provide what you said, immediate relief for commuters in northern Montgomery and in Frederick. We got the plan. Portion now, of troll revenue. Does that include doing something with the American Legion Bridge? Yes, yeah, start at the American Legion Bridge and continue those managed lanes over the bridge and up the, up the western portion of 495 and up the spur and up 270 all the way to Frederick. Okay. We also want to dedicate this... One shortcoming we feel of the MDOT plan is it's 100% highways. Granted, Governor, you've made a historic in, in investment in transit. You're right. Portion of this toll revenue should be invested in transit projects like they do in Virginia. We're all fans of yeah. Virginia's approach. Um, we also want to have tra transportation demand management, including um, local connections to local serving transit like BRT, park and ride lot improvements, encouraging carpooling and encouraging telecommuting. And finally, we propose for Prince George's especially connecting to key activity centers like Prince George's Hospital and bring the managed lanes all the way down to National Harbor where commuters could then connect to transit over the Wilson Bridge to get to Alexandria and to get upriver to HQ2 for Amazon in, um, at National Landing. Yep. Those are all key elements that I think would be easy to build in that would greatly improve the plan. Mr. Chairman, I really appreciate your remarks. Um, I think many of the things that you're talking about are already being considered as part of the plan. We're willing to consider even more. Great. Uh, thank you for taking the time. And I just want to leave room for the rest of the folks to have their say. Thank well. you so thank much, you. sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. We have uh, Kai uh, Hagen from Frederick County Council.